Pairing feedback with bubblegum angst, the Jesus and Mary chain represented a rebuke to the hollowness of 80s pop and rock. And cast against the backdrop of a conservatively regressive political climate, their iconic album Psycho Candy was a wake-up call for a generation of artists and fans. Melding a disparate reverence for 60s girl groups, the Rolling Stones and German industrial music, the album was hugely influential in shoegaze, noise rock and modern indie as a whole. Let's take a look at five key elements that shaped the group's distinctive debut. Psycho Candy was recorded over a six-week period in engineer John Loder's DIY studio in North London. Although a far cry from an established space, the studio had a reputation in the underground punk scene. Within the converted living room, the band were given free reign to experiment as they pleased. And the lo-fi environment helped sculpt the oral identity of the album thin, trebly and cavernous. The album cost just £17,000 to record, which compared to, say, My Bloody Valentine's £250,000 recording budget for Loveless is peanuts, really. Psycho Candy's use of reverb and mic placement helped capture one of the album's most distinctive features, a sense of distance, austerity and desolation, which magically offset its sugary pop heart. Atypical of the close miking recording practices of the day, instruments were recorded at a distance, the one exception being Jim Reed's vocals, which were mostly close miked and buried in reverb. Inspired by Phil Spector's wall of sound, the dry tracks tend to sit in the centre of the mix, while wet tracks were panned expansively. As on subsequent releases, Psycho Candy showcases the band's proclivity for high-frequency sonic detritus. After all, what would a Jesus and Mary Chain record be without squalls of raucous feedback? These sounds were achieved through manipulation of pedals, guitar vibrato systems, toggle switches, and of course, a physical proximity between the guitarists and their amps. Every single one of the album's 14 tracks features feedback in some capacity, from subtle squeals to brutal sonic blasts. Despite being far from virtuosic, the Jesus and Mary Chain's raw and untutored fretwork represented some of the most definitive guitar playing of the 1980s. But their abrasive soundscaping was more than a simple matter of overdriving their amplifiers. Hollow body guitars, high wattage amps and a liberal approach to fuzz are at the core of Psycho Candy sound. The band favoured Gretsch, Gibson and Guild hollow or semi-hollow guitars, Fender twin reverbs and the key to their sound, 1970s Shin-Ai fuzz wah pedals. The final defining element of Psycho Candy is the thin, cavernous drum sound that pervades the entire album. On loan from his new band, Primal Scream, Bobby Gillespie was the man behind the action. His simple playing style was facilitated by a two-piece kit comprised of a floor tom and snare. And if Gillespie is to be believed, two disused trash cans were sometimes substituted for conventional drums. In a 1998 interview with Melody Maker, Jim Reed reflected that Gillespie was the worst and the best all rolled into one. And that's exactly why they loved him. What's your favourite element of the Jesus and Mary Chain sound? Tell us in the comments below.